All right. Um, yeah, I was going to use the overhead um, gantry shots to do this um, video, but then I was thinking, oh, I'm going to be bouncing around quite a bit, and I don't even think I'm going to be um, putting the initial setups for the Russians, and, uh, sorry, the Germans and the Russians, since the Germans set up first. Um, but I did want to go over um, thinking about the initial setup, uh, as well as discussing again the uh, victory conditions. Also, a bit about um, my previous three uh, uh, playthroughs, and how I'm going to also be approaching uh, this one. Uh, first off, how I am going to be approaching this one is going to be just pretending that I'm playing with an, <clears throat> excuse me, another person, just like I would. Uh, uh, for me, this is uh, what I would what I often call a um, afternoon with a buddy game. I absolutely enjoy these types of games. Um, secondly, I found in the playthroughs and the way the game is set up that um, it's difficult for either side to get a major victory, uh, which I think is good. I also think that <clears throat> the way they've set it up, it's slightly asymmetrical for the German, uh, in the German's favor, which I think is also good historically. Um, but not so much so that it's, um, you know, one, uh, somebody playing the Russians would be like, God, this sucks. I've never, I've never felt that, uh, both sides, as far as I'm concerned, have different problems, uh, uh, to solve, um, have different victory conditions, um, and both have, I think quite a quite a good chance of getting a minor victory. Uh, I think it's yeah, it's just different. Uh, the only quibble I would say I do have about this game is there's thirty turns. So um, from my playthroughs, I uh, like I said, this is just my experience. But from my playthroughs, I've noticed that if I was the more experienced player, uh, I think I would play the Germans. Uh, I would let the uh, the inexperienced player play the Germans, not because they're easier to play. Uh, I think they've got a little bit more things to think about due to the fact that, for example, the Germans are the only ones allowed to use rail. Uh, the Russians have rail lines, but it's basically only used for um, supply, uh, tracing supply. And remember, at the very first six turns uh, for the Russians, they have to supp uh, they can only supp uh, trace supply uh, to one of their, uh, to six hexes out to an enemy, uh, sorry, to, uh, one of their rail lines that goes to the east side of, or south to the, uh, sides of the map and are not, um, uh, interfered with, with an enemy zone of control. So remember those things. After six turns, they're like the Germans, which is uh, as long as they can trace one of their rail lines, uh, unobstructed, um, uh, to the map edge, uh, for the, um, excuse me, for the Germans, it's the West Edge, and also Konigsberg. So, there we go. We're going to go over again the victory conditions, which will, I think, shape what's going to happen, uh, like how to do the initial setups, obviously. Also, remember, since I'm going to be playing the two, uh, pl pretending to play as two players, we're going to do the inverted uh, units bit. So, when I go to do the Russian setup after the uh, doing the Germans, all their units will be um, inverted. So I won't be able to see what they're uh, doing. Um, also, I popped these on just to show the extent to where the Second Army um, Cavalry uh, can be set up uh, initially. So they're allowed to go up to eight hexes away from Ostrolenka over here or uh, Oswick. So that's as far as, uh, and I was just looking, I mean, it doesn't matter over there. That's the way I was looking at. I was just looking at, at, out towards here. So I think it's, or is it Lomza? Hold on here. Let's check again. Um, the cavalry units are an exception, however, and may be deployed up to eight hexes from Ostrolenka. Okay, so it's just Ostrolenka. All right, then. Um, and here's the also... Um, the red is the southern border, northern border for the first and second army. And here's another thing to remember. I also love the way, I'm sorry if I'm jumping around all over the place. Uh, like I said, we will go to the victory conditions. Uh, one other thing I do like 
um, about the way they've set up this game in the sense that if you do want to try to do it historically, in other words, focus your attention on the second army uh, down south here, and then, uh, you know, and, and put like a stalling tactic, um, just a few forces over here um, to slow down the first army and then use your amazing um, rail infrastructure to uh, swap, uh, like, you know, pivot and then go after the first army once you've annihilated the second army. Well, look at the counter spread, which is just wonderful. So down here, that's it. That's all you're getting for the second army for the Russians. And up here, that's the first army. And there you go for the uh, the Germans for the um, for their initial setup. There's the other thing you have to remember as the Germans too. You're slightly faster. You don't have as many units, but you're also stronger. Um, and then you also have to take into account the reinforcements. Uh, you can see that um, the Germans are not going to get. I, I, hopefully, you can see I split them up so that would be like in one day and so on and so forth. So the Germans don't get a lot of reinforcements until you know uh, early September, which I would assume w was when um, a lot of the uh, divisions were uh, rerouted from the Western Front and brought into the Eastern Front. Um, so it's going to take. A, it's you know you also have a little bit here right there but uh it's going to be in other words the russians are at an advantage at the beginning i would say um also i will mention yeah you know, like i said yet again here i am i haven't even talked about the victory conditions again i will talk about my experiences uh playing both uh both sides or well right now i'm gonna i guess uh, uh i'll focus just primarily on the germans since uh that's going to be um the people to be set up first. I've lost um, all three times. Uh, the Russians have won, um, had a minor victory each time. The third time was the closest for the Germans. The first time um, was pretty bad, uh, not too bad. The second one um, was horrible for the Germans, uh, close to almost a major victory for the Russians due to the fact that, hold on, I'm just having a bit of coffee, sorry. Uh, due to the fact that I was very, very aggressive up here in East Prussia and at the very beginning of the game, which is not a good idea from my experience, um, because uh, the Russians swarmed me. Remember, they fall out of supply, which uh, means, what does it say here? Um... Units which are unsupplied of one subtracted from their movement factor and attack at one half strength, rounded fractions down. They defend normally. All right. So I didn't, in other words, I didn't play to their disadvantage. I went and was very aggressive right off the bat. Uh, and then um, another time... I also played it um, very conservatively, which was not a good idea because the Russians were able to start securing their positions. And remember what it gets down to for the... Well, we'll talk about the victory conditions soon enough. Um, and then this area here, remember, uh, Russians can't use rail for movement. Uh, another thing for the movement you have to remember is... Sorry if I'm jumping around again, but that's you know the way I do things. Um, hopefully the playthrough will be a bit better. Um, so for movement, the rail is uh, single track and double track. And in this game, uh, single track, you're allowed to move one division or its equivalent. Remember, there's no stacking except for uh, brigades. So you can, uh, two brigades uh, equal a division. Um, you can move it uh, one division in one direction only. Or uh, a double track, you can move two divisions in one division, uh, in one direction, or uh, two divisions, uh, one direction each. So you also have to use something to uh, track that as well. But um, in other words, and there's this one spot right here you're allowed to do too. So that's a secret little, you can, it, just a, like a little uh, shortcut you got to remember. But the, but that area is almost impenetrable. Um, and you've got the slowdown of the woods. You also have to remember about your Landstrom units 
that slow um, uh, forces the Russian cavalry to uh, stop every time they uh, encounter a rail line for that turn. Um, so these things are, those are things to consider. Also, you've got those uh, fortifications, which are great defensive uh, spots for your uh, weak uh, strength point units. Um, so what I've done before is, um, and I'm going to try it differently this time. I'm going to try it historically, which I've ne I have not done before. Usually what I've done is I've uh, concentrated uh, my forces towards the first army, um, and it hasn't worked uh, close. Um, and I, I tried, yeah, you know, I tried to go towards them right off the bat, uh, and then I put a kind of like a pseudo holding force down here using my uh, using the fortifications and that impenetrable area there. Uh, so I put my small units there and. Uh, keep some people around in the woods and the swamp. Uh, we'll take a look also at the um, combat results uh, table so you can see and, and the terrain effects to see what happens there. So that's what I usually do. Um, but this time what I'll try to do uh, for the German initial setup is I'll put uh, most of my heavy, my heavy boys down here. Um, and I will also try to keep it historically that uh, um, there's only one... Um, Cavalry Division, the 1st Cavalry Division, I'll keep them up here in East Prussia and any of the brigades that seem um, that are up northwards, like maybe the Danzig one, maybe it's pushing it a bit. There's a Danzig Brigade over here. Hold on, I'll move them over. So maybe I'll, uh, um, maybe I'll put them up there. So I'll put a few, like maybe the reserves, uh, like, you know, I'll try to be a little historic. I, I'm not going to go and look up the actual whatevers, but like I'll do something like that. I'll put reserves and uh, cavalry, but not too much. So I'll, I'll focus most of my attention on um, uh, the uh, the second army down, down south uh, near Allenstein and um, use the Messerian Lakes area as a, um, as a giant wall. And... Um, We'll see how that works. Uh, now we'll go to the victory conditions and see if it works, works. Um, here we go. So it says the victory conditions in Tannenberg are basically geographic and reflect the goals which, which each side was trying to achieve. In other words, the Russians seeking to overrun East Prussia, the Germans to stop them. Victory is determined at the end of the game in the following manner. Russian. The Russians achieve a major victory if no supply German units remain on the map east of the Vistula or outside of Konigsberg. They achieve a minor victory if they have blocked all rail lines between Konigsberg and the West Edge or have more divisions or equivalent inside East Prussia than the Germans. German. The Germans achieve a major victory if no supplied Russian units remain inside East Prussia. They achieve a minor victory if there is still a rail link between Konigsberg and the West Edge, and they have at least as many divisions or equivalent in East Prussia as the Russians. And there's the kicker for me, like I said. It's amazing that I have not won as the Germans yet. Uh, playing, I've played three times. Um, because there's 30 turns. How in the world can you uh, lose to the Russians or how can you give them at least at the bare minimum a minor victory with 30 turns? You should be able to um, outdo them divisions wise, um, you know, even bad luck die rolling uh, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, here we'll take a quickie look and you can see what I mean by uh, maybe some of the things you have to think about terrain wise uh, and combat wise. So um yeah, it's interesting, eh? It's uh, it's uh, it's about retreats, uh, the terrain mostly. So um, that's the thing, and then yet again with the forts, uh, you know, adding strength points and so on and so forth. Um, so that's it. Um, I'm going to, like I said, I'll try to uh, set up when I do my uh, pop in my setup. I'll have them up, and then we'll uh, I'll discuss uh, how the Russians go about things. Um, of course, they'll just be looking at the flip side of counters. But I'll hopefully pause that and pop it in. We'll see how it goes. All right. Hope you're having a great Sunday.